One of the most challenging things you can do in trading is to adjust for volatility. I want to show you some easy language that I developed today. Very easy rain uh, setup. This set stop loss uses a variable stop loss based on the average range. So 20 times the average range of the last 27 bars. 27. There's 27 15-minute bars in the day session for futures. From 8.30 a.m. Central till 3.15 p.m. Central, there's 27 15-minute bars. And so if you have a different interval, you may want to adjust that. And we've looked at a filter before that says if the average range of the last 27 bars is greater than 50, which is $1,000 uh, per, per E-mini NASDAQ, then we don't trade. And so what would happen, though, if we just said, hey, we're going to trade... We're going to have a variable stop loss. It's going to depend on those average range of the last 27 bars. And this 20 is the point value. So there's 20, uh, $20 per point in the NASDAQ. So we're using the point value times the average range of the last 27 bars, which is the number of 15-minute bars in a day session. And what you also want to do is if you are a finite trader, meaning we all have a finite amount of capital, maybe you want to set a maximum stop loss. So the maximum stop loss in this case would be 1400 and I'll show you how I developed that here in a minute. That was from the maximum adverse excursion. And I'm going to now show you some results here and why I'm doing this. Let me show you really quickly why I'm doing this. Now here is our standard setup with a $600 stop loss. Historically speaking, going back to 2007 with a um, $25 round turn slippage and commission. And I took some screenshots of all these, four different scenarios. So $600 um, stop loss. We have the $2,900 profit target on the, on the shorts and $1,400 on the longs. And so $85 average trade profit, 679.9%. What happens if we add that range filter with that same $600 stop loss? You see that we get, let me expand this a little bit you see that if you add a range filter, you go from 788 trades to 717 trades. You increase your net profit as a percentage of drawdown to 1114%. Your average trade profit goes up to 101 from 85. So you expand your average trade profit by not trading when the average range over the last 24 hours of that day session um, last 27 bars, which is 24 hours of a day session, um, is greater than $1,000. You improve this. This is a great improvement. We also looked at a $1,200 stop loss. $1,200 stop loss with no filter um, will give you 728%, $88 a little bit better, and it's, tr it's uh, 70K. Um, it's also making recent equity peaks. That's the thing is it's, it's traded during this time period when the $600 stop loss version stops trading down here. And $600 stop loss version traded down here. The $600 stop loss with the filter stopped trading um, at the end of December. As volatility expanded, it stopped. Now let's look at the $1,200 stop loss. $1,200 or $2,000 stop loss. $697, 107 average trade profit. And you're at equity peaks, but a more volatile equity curve, as you can see, um, $12,000 drawdown, uh, $9,000 drawdown, $9,000 drawdown, and then back here is just a $6,500 drawdown. So this, obviously, with the range filter, is much more desirable for a, um, you know, for a conservative trader, but... In the current market environment, it wouldn't have, it's still not trading. So it's not trading right now. While the $2,000, uh, this, is, this is the $600 stop loss. It started to come back a little bit. The strategy with the $1,200 stop loss is at equity peaks. While the strategy with the $2,000 stop loss is also at equity peaks. These strategies have done really well um, with a with $1,200 and $2,000 stop loss. So what is the best of both worlds knowing that? Um, we I tested two different scenarios. More of a step function based on the psychology that um, markets stay in certain point values even as indexes go up. And then there's a quick adjustment. So 
you could trade with this stop loss right here. If the average range is less than a thousand, we use a six hundred dollar stop loss. If it's greater than a thousand, we use a twelve hundred dollar stop loss. Let's take a look at the results of what that would look like in this setup. So using that, um, one thousand seventy three percent. That is slightly better or slightly worse than our range filter. So if you have a range filter version, it has 1114%, 101 average trade profit. This has the highest average trade profit though, um, $8,120 drawdown, and it is still trading in this current market environment, making equity peaks. It's trading during the week of um, that we're currently in, week ending February the 25th. And so one of the things you can do when you have a trade station strategy is you can turn off um, you can, for example, if you click on this, you can set my exits to false, false stop loss, false profit target, and you can insert profit target, long exit, $1,400, profit target, short exit, $2,900, and then you can create this, your own exit strategies if you want. This is just a profit target. If you want to create your own exit strategies, you can do that. You can have these set stop losses like this, um, and that is kind of a step function based on volatility or it can be more of a analog type function where it's constantly adjusting. You know, this could expand and decrease during the day based on the average ranges expanding and decreasing. And so you could have an average set stop loss, um, average range of the last 27 bars times the point value with a maximum of $1,400. So you could say a set stop loss. Let's, what, let's look at what happens if we don't have that maximum in there. 20 times the average range of the last 27 bars. And then comment this one out. Let's take a look at that. I'm sharing this progression with you on how to set this up. So you create this easy language and you insert it into this chart. And you can have your own custom stop loss outside of what I have in mind. So this is Cobra 3. And let's close this down and take a look at the results. And so if you look at the results here, 993, um, 86, 540. You also get $110 average trade profit, which is very high, much higher than our originals, which were in the mid 80s. You get a full extra $25, which makes a difference in trading. So let me show you where I got the 1400. I actually had this range filter, range filter set to true, so let's set that to false. So here we are. It's 900 uh, on the net profit as a percentage drawdown, 105, and we're at equity peaks here. We traded through this challenging time at equity peaks. Let's look at the trade graphs. And so what you can see here is your average range expands regardless of dollar amount. So if you have a stop loss like this, set stop loss 20 times the average range of 27, there is no upper cap on that loss limit. And so if you want to maximize the maximum uh, number that could be, you would still need a maximum number you could use um, for your max loss limit. And so this is the key right here, is setting this stop loss. And again, I got this from the maximum adverse excursion trade graph. Maximum adverse excursion, you see $1,400 right there. There is only one winner. You see the green triangle? There's only one winner beyond that. It went through a, um, a drawdown of 2155 to get $1,165. We can remove that. We can remove that. It looks like a good setup based on this strategy and current and ranges that we've seen. That $1,400 is a good maximum stop loss for this setup. So let's comment this one out and go with set stop loss minimum, the smallest number between the average range of the last $2,700 and $1,400. So this expands. If this expands beyond $1,400, then we use $1,400. So that's how that works. Let's take a look at the results now. So you see now there are no losses beyond 1,400. Um, 
you can see here 108 improve that average trade profit this number right here is not uh, it's 871 it's not our highest number our highest number is when we use the range filter so um, if you use the range filter you get lower drawdowns higher net profit as a percentage of drawdown uh, percentage profitability is 46.86 and so um, you know part of trading though is not missing moves and so if you uh, trade it with the range filter you're not trading right now you stopped in December and this one is making equity peaks on the year it's up 47.25 and so a nice setup to look at this is going back seven years testing it back seven years one of our top strategies Cobra 3 NASDAQ and this is how you can use a variable range stop loss with a maximum value since you're a finite uh, everyone has a finite account size and risk tolerance and you want to add this too so you can do that per contract when you trade multiple contracts you don't have to change these values so set stop contract in this example only one contract so when I verified it won't change the results but you want to make sure you do that so those are some tips and tricks on how to uh, use this specific min list in the set stop loss statement and how you can insert your own strategies into an existing strategy without changing the code on the existing strategy. Hey, David Bean here. Welcome to Capstone Trading Systems YouTube page. Be sure to subscribe to join our community of algorithmic traders. We are real money traders. We share our winning streaks, we share our losing streaks, as well as market updates, strategies, and coding tips.